doing a live from uh, the beach, uh, as I am very grateful and lucky to uh, live relatively near uh, a beach. So why not, eh? Unfortunately, the sea is a little rough and coming up quite high, so if I suddenly stop, hopefully I haven't been uh, washed away. So it can be very dangerous around here. Anyway, so uh, what I'm going to talk about today is a tool that I've been using for, well, it's been for a while, but really focusing on for the last six months or so. And I'm, I don't, I'm not overstating it to say that it is, I think, the thing that has led to the most inspiration I've ever had. Um, if you've been following me at all, uh, you probably want me to shut up about how excited I have been about my music, <laughs> uh, which is fair enough. Um, and uh, I think the number one reason for it is this uh, tool. Um, and it's something that I've been obsessively using um, over and over again. Um, but before we get to that, um, there's a new, oh, nearly tripped over there. There's a new class of my uh, Mission Make Music Your Life program starting uh, next week, uh, and the link is in the description. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to find out more about that, uh, click that link. Anyway, so this tool, this uh, mysterious tool, um, and you may well think if you've uh, seen any of the, or listened to any of the music I've been making, I, uh, as uh, Zentor, which is the new artist project, that the tool I'm referring to is a brand new Moog synth. But uh, if you know me at all, you'll also probably uh, realize that that isn't the tool I'm, I'm uh, referring to. Certainly, if anything, getting the subharmonicon, uh, it, th the fact that I got it is as a result of the tool I'm uh, talking about. So I'm reading a book at the moment. Uh, I just started reading, when I say reading it, listening to it. Um, and it's called, and I'm about probably a quarter of the way through. And a quarter of the way through, I thoroughly recommend it. It's called Think Like a Rocket Scientist. And um, apparently, us here over at Make Music Your Life, we think like rocket scientists so far, which is good, <laughs> I think, anyway. Um, because he actually talks about this, I mean, it's a different version of it, but this tool in, in that. So uh, the tool I'm talking about, rocket scientists also use to do seemingly impossible things. And if you've been on my Momentum Monday uh, sessions, you will be somewhat familiar with it, but I'm going to go into much more detail about specifically how I've been using it in the studio and what you can do to uh, use it too. So, first off, one of the biggest problems, well, it's actually one of our biggest strengths as human beings is that we adapt very quickly. So, uh, I was standing in line in a pharmacy not so long ago, <laughs> which is, a, you know, in the midst of the situation as it is now, the, the number one place you want to be is not a pharmacy, right? Uh, but it's a place you have to go to. <laughs> um, and I was standing in line with all these people wearing masks and you know, distancing and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, signs everywhere. and. You know, people were just kind of hanging out, checking their phone and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, if you'd have shown me a video of this situation just a year ago, I would have thought, oh, it's the end of the world. I mean, it is the end of the world for a lot of people, which is absolute tragedy, but it's like, you know, the, how are we going to even exist in such a, you know, it's the kind of thing that you get in Hollywood movies. And now we're right in the middle of it. And people are just standing in line, checking their phone, just like they always were. 
So human beings are incredibly adaptable, which is a huge strength, of course. Um, you know, another example closer to home is you go into a club and, or, you know, a gig and it's like, oh my God, it's so loud. How am I ever going to, oh God, I need to get out. And, you know, half an hour later, you're dancing inside the speaker or something. So we're incredibly um, adaptable. It's one of the reasons that we've sort of taken over the, the, the planet. Um, and, but this is also our greatest weakness because when we are so uh, adaptable to our environment, when we can actually shape it in the way that we want, and then we, you know, in order for it to maybe be more comfortable or, or fit our needs more, what then ends up happening is, if we're not careful, is that we just assume that's how things are done. Yeah. We have a bunch of assumptions which we're not even aware of because we've adapted to the, situa the, the situation. And the worst thing about it is that, particularly now, um, in the world of you know, massive amounts of information uh, being blasted at you from uh, four corners, is that these assumptions get perpetuated and built on top of. It's like assumption upon assumption upon assumption upon assumption. You know, this is possible, this isn't possible. You know, this is possible because I've seen other people do it. This isn't possible because I've never seen anyone uh, do that. And the problem is uh, with this is that very few people question these assumptions at all. They just look for what already works. And that is great to a point. However, what works for one person in terms of the kind of granular uh, things doesn't necessarily work for someone else. And, you know, all language is imperfect. You can't communicate an idea perfectly to anyone else. So often these, ass these assumptions, you know, someone will take something out of context, make an assumption out of it, and then that becomes the new normal, uh, if you like. And if we are, as music makers, to make a difference in the world, if we are as music makers to actually contribute something of value to other people, which has to be when you know anybody can do anything at a touch of a button, has to be in some way unique, what we must do, we must, it's not, it's not an option, is be unique by questioning, you know, become unique by questioning our assumptions, going back to first principles. But it's very hard because what you're doing is you're fighting the natural, not natural, the, you're fighting a very strong urge to find comfort, to be satisfied, to uh, relax, uh, and to find everything easy. And what you're doing by challenging these assumptions and asking these questions is you're actually making things hard for yourself on purpose. That's one of the reasons in a lot of the missions that I give in Mission Make Music Life, which are weekly actions, they're actually intended to create questions for you, for you to be asking questions, to challenge you, because it's asking you to question your assumptions. I mean, you know, if you're familiar with my splurge process, it's, it, I mean, it basically asks the question, is quantity in opposition to quality? Because that's the assumption out there. That has been the assumption for many years. It's changing uh, gradually, but that is the assumption. And the answer to that question is no, not always, because quantity is a route to quality. So how do you do this for yourself? And how is it useful you know, on a practical level for uh, your music? Um, well, what you want to do is you want to formulate a question for yourself. Hey, Ro. Um, it's kind of hard to see in this uh, bright uh, uh, sunlight. Yeah. So how do you... Yeah, you need to ask yourself a question. 
uh, you need to formulate one. And it may take a little while to actually get the formulation so it's really giving you the inspiration that uh, I promised in the title of this video. <laughs> so, uh, and as I said, if you've done my if you've done my Momentum Monday stuff, you'll be familiar with my massive impossible moonshot uh, thing, um, which is essentially thinking of an impossible question, yeah, an impossible goal that you will probably never hit. Now, there are lots of different MIMS, Massive Impossible moon Moonshots, that you can create uh, for yourself in lots of different areas. Um, and I'm going to talk about the ones that you can create in the studio. Uh, and what I recommend you do over the next few days is, as a result of what I'm uh, telling you here, try and formulate your own Massive Impossible Moonshot question. The thing that you are trying to solve that you don't actually believe is solvable. So, I mean, it's kind of similar to, um, the reason it's called a moonshot is because of the space program and, you know, Kennedy and, you know, the Russian, uh, Russians getting into space first, putting a man in space first. And so, you know, the Ameri it was the Cold War and, you know, so the Ameri you know, America was like, oh no, we gotta win. <laughs> we gotta get, put a man on the moon. Um, and so, you know, they said, right, we're essentially going to decide, we're gonna work out how to build a rocket and put a man on the moon with the very limited uh, information uh, and knowledge that we have now, which when you look back on the, the technology back then is absolutely insane when you think about it. Anyway, so um, so what you want to do is you want to you want to think of something that you want to achieve, an area in your uh, music where you want to make real progress. So. And there's lots of different ways that you can uh, think about this. If you're, if you're um, not sure of how to formulate a moonshot question in relation to your music, a good place to start is time. I want to do something, or be able to do, how do I do something in a certain amount of time? A very small amount of time, yeah? So, about six months ago, I was thinking, I want to do, because I'd, I'd released the album back in 2019, and then there was this big gap, um, and I was making loads of music, I was finishing lots of music, but I just wasn't releasing it. So I was like, I've got to, get, I've got to sort this out, this is ridiculous. So I said, well, I'm going to do a track a week in 2021. But looking at my life as it was, as it still is, in fact, I was like, how am I going to do that by making music in the way that I am now? How am I going to do a track a week making the music that I'm making? And the fact was I wasn't because it was too complicated. It was too involved. I was doing all kinds of things and it's not that the music was bad. It was just the process. It wasn't going to work for that situation. Now, what's important to understand here is that something that's more complicated is not better. Something that's more complicated is just more complicated, <laughs> yeah? Um, I mean, something that's simple is not necessarily better. Um, often it is, but it's not necessarily better. It's just more simple. They're different things. Something that's harder is not better. I know we're taught that differently. We're, that's drummed into us um, at, you know, in our industrial age education, that hard is good. But harder isn't better. Harder is harder. So I thought, okay. I'm going to have to change something here because I'm very happy with the music I'm uh, making as it is now, but I'm not going to be able to finish it at the rate that I, uh, I need to. So I thought, all right, time for a moonshot. Um, back then I hadn't um, thought of the name Massive Impossible Moonshot, Mim. <laughs> uh, so it was like, time for a moonshot. So I was like, okay, what would I have to do? So this was the question I came up with. What would I have to do, and what would my music have to be if I had to release one track a day for the rest of my life? I only had one hour a day to do it, and the 
quality had to improve. So let's just dissect uh, this, this question so that you can formulate your own. And I mean, you can use mine if you want. It, it worked very well. Um, so, so, and I've, I've, got an, I've got another one. I'm using another one now because it's like that question has sort of fulfilled its purpose for me. So what would I have to do? Well, let's, let's say, what would I have to change and what would my music have to be? I'm gonna have a little brackets in there and not be. So that part of the question is saying, well, I'm gonna to have to change something, obviously. So how would I have to change? And what would my music have to be or not be? So what's important about that part of uh, the question is that it's assuming that my music can be anything I choose it to be. Like within that part of the question, we are essentially reminding ourselves that what music is, what our music is, what people say their music is, what they choose to do, is essentially resting on... It's a bit windy. I'm just wondering, I can't really walk backwards. I've got to the end of the beach. Oh, never mind. I'll just go like this. If you can't hear because of the wind, in fact, maybe that's better. Yeah, so... Sorry about that. I'm not sure about walking backwards in this. So yeah, so essentially it's reminding us that our music can be anything we choose, right? So people often go, what should I do in order to make music? Yeah, in order to make the music. Well, it's not really what you should do because you could do a lot of things. And you know, some of them would be better and some of them would be wor uh, worse. One of the problems with the information online is that it kind of assumes that there is a way, a right way. Um, and you know, my mom, when I was learning an instrument, said, uh, you know, you've got, to, you've got to learn the rules so you can break them. And that is definitely, um, that is definitely a way of doing things. And, and it is a way I do things in, very, uh, in, in, in you know, lots of areas of my life. But you don't have to only do that because that requires that you know the rules first. You could just go ahead and start trying stuff. <laughs> right? Make your own rules, man. Okay, so what would I have to do? Like, what would I have to change? What would I have to do differently? And what would my music have to be and not be if? Right? So that bit is just the assumption questioning part of the uh, question. If I had to, if I had to is like, essentially, if somebody had a gun to my head and said, I'm going to pull the trigger unless you do this. Now, this is a very powerful uh, little mental hack that you can use gun to the head thinking. Yeah, if I had to do this, if there was no, no choice, right? Because if you had to do it um, and you know, like if you did it, you would die or maybe, you know, a loved one would die or something like that then you'd do it, you'd find a way, right? Or you get down, down close to it. Um, and often we don't use that kind of thinking. We tend to stay in comfort, right? So if I had to is that part, yeah? That's what that's doing. If I had to, now comes the bit where you're identifying the impossible thing that you don't think that you can do. You don't believe that you can do it. So release one track a day for the rest of my life, right? So one track a day. Hello, somebody, I can't, can't read who that was. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm on a beach, what, what could be better? Yeah, talking to all of you. Um, uh, I'm in uh, Coolum. This is actually Yurumba Beach in uh, Sunshine Co on Sunshine Coast. Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, release a track a day for the rest of my life, right? Now, obviously a release is different to a finished piece of music because I'm putting it out into the world, yeah? And the reason I'm asking this question, I didn't say a, a track a week because that's the actual goal I wanted to achieve, right? Which isn't a moonshot, yeah? I am putting the bar way beyond what I expect to be able to do what I, even what I'm trying to do 
right? And why am I doing that? Why am I staying a truck a day for the rest of my life? Because the truck a day bit is like seven times more productive than a truck a week, yeah? For the rest of my life is in there in order to stop it from being, well, I'll just work really hard. And, and you know, because if it's forever, I can't just work really hard. I have to do, I have to change something because I can't just, at some point I'm gonna hit a wall if I just go, I'll just work for 24 hours a day, yeah? So those two parts of the question that I asked myself are there for that. In only one hour a day. So this is about my situation. So what is my situation now? This is how I came to the one hour a day. What is my situation now? And what would I have to do? Like what is the amount of time that I would have to, like if I could wave a magic wand and say, right, I can definitely find, you know, I, I can definitely do, this, do it in any amount of time. What would be the amount of time I would always have be? Yeah? So uh, one hour is what I came to. I mean, I guess I could have said five minutes, um, but I settled on one hour. It's a nice round number, and anyway, I enjoy making music. <laughs> so, so I want to be spending at least an hour a day, right? So, so that, you know, one hour a day, but again, one hour a day is a lot less than I thought was possible. Um, and then, yes, and I said, for the rest of uh, uh, one, yeah, in one hour a day, and then the final one um, was, and the quality had to improve. Because obviously, without that final phrase, and the quality had to improve, what I could what I could end up doing is just making a bunch of crap, right? And when I say, and the word improve is important, it's not, and the quality had to be brilliant, right? Because that's an end point. I'm using the word improve in order to remind myself that this is a journey towards improvement, constant journey towards improvement. Yeah, the quality constantly has to improve. Yeah. So that's how I formulated that question. And I went to work asking it over and over and over again. In fact, I'm going to walk back again this way. It's better for the wind. Right. So I went ahead and asked myself that question over and over again. I did free writing uh, on it uh, regularly. I designed splurges in the studio uh, in order to, uh, as a result of the free writing, I designed splurges in order to find different ways of doing things. It was like something I was really obsessed about for a long time. You know, ask uh, Luke or R Ashley, make music your life uh, coaches they saw it happening I was you know, constantly texting them going, what, what do you think of this and what do you think of that and you know um, and what ended up happening is where I'm at now because at the start of this year and again the Moog subharmonicon uh, which Santa brought me the reason that went on my Christmas list was as a result of this question if you got my email if you're on my email list you got my email uh, last weekend about my Moog, uh, my Moog army um, and how yes the equipment is great and the, the, the equipment is the equipment and great equipment is great <laughs> sounds great the actual tool that you're using the tool that defines what your music is is this one right and that's that's why I'm telling you about this tool the actual you know the massive impossible uh, moonshot because in asking that question, it became clear that I was doing lots and lots of things that I didn't necessarily have to do. It forced me to focus on where I'm, like, do I have to? Do I actually have to do this process? What would I have to do if I just removed the process completely? What are the parts of the process which I love more than anything else? What am I really, really good at? compared to the other things? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Where do I excel in comparison to other areas? 
And one of the areas that I excel in comparison to other areas, not people, is in discovery. So in kind of hearing, noticing patterns, noticing opportunities. I think that's something that I'm really good at compared to other things. Um, where I'm not so good, where I tend to kind of descend into sort of rabbit holes of endless changes and tweaks is in overanalyzing things. It's the other side of the coin to the pattern recognition. It's like over analyzing this and over analyzing that and sort of coming up with a new concept that I'm going to try, you know, all that kind of stuff. So as a result, and the other thing that this question brought up for me was it reminded me of one of my biggest goals in general, which is, I mean, always been one of my biggest goals in terms of my music is actually being able to compose music live. Um, I mean, in the very first music that I released, we had a band and we went out on the road into clubs with, I mean, back then it was like 1995. Um, and I went, we went into <laughs> clubs with an old Mac and samplers and it was crazy. It was, I, I, and I had Cubase on this old Mac and I, I would basically arrange the tracks with a loop, yeah, by muting and that kind of stuff. It was, it was, it was nuts. <laughs> it was kind of like, literally like checking your email in the mid nineties in a crazy club. Um, so, you know, that was something that's been kind of, I, I've, I, I've been uh, obsessed with. And it reminded me of that, which is how I've ended up in, at the start of this year, realizing that I can actually release an album a week and the quality have to improve. So, in other words, and, and the quality is improving. Now, so in other words, this, I, I didn't expect to ever solve the massive, impossible uh, moonshot question that I asked myself. But in asking it, it is literally over and over again, it literally changed uh, my music into what it is becoming now. Now, when I say the quality is improving, bear in mind, it's not there yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it ever will be there, whatever that means. Um, it's not actually there yet because it's always uh, improving. I can, you know, I mean, I just, uh, before this uh, live stream, I listened to the next album that I'm uh, mastering uh, right now. And there are a number of different things about it where I'm like, hey, it's not so good. <laughs> but I'm using the releases to improve the uh, next release. So why, why am I releasing it? Well, because actually the music that I'm releasing now, the albums that I'm releasing now, I think are better. They're not better in every way, by no means, but better in lots of different ways than any of the albums that I released uh, before. So if I was happy to release the albums before, I'm happy to release these ones. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they are actually being released really sharpens up the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it something that you can't, it's almost like you can't make excuses when uh, you're releasing. So with all that said, I did uh, uh, promise you that I was going to let you know what my new question is uh, right now. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I'm still in the middle of really sharpening it up and formulating it, but it goes something uh, like this. Whoop. It's a bit of uh, quicksand there. <laughs> Maybe not quicksand exactly. But, uh, hopefully I don't sort of disappear into a sinkhole. Uh, anyway, so the question that um, I'm asking myself now obsessively is what would I have to do? What would I have to change? And what would my music have to be if I had to make an album, produce an album, let's say, in only the time it takes to play it? So literally, my massive impossible uh, moonshot question right now is if I had to, literally play something and it be ready for Spotify, yeah, what would I have to do? Um, and there is a sharpening up of that at the end with, and 
the resulting album, as I said, this is still, in, I'm still formulating the question, and the result, resulting album be as good as any other album out there, right? So that it's not, yeah, this is a live set. Uh, this is a recorded live set. No, this is an actual album that is as good in quality as any other album on Spotify. What would I have to do and what would I have to change about what I'm doing if I had to do that? If I had to literally play the thing and it'd be ready. Because, I mean, right now that seems like an impossible goal to me and I'm absolutely nowhere uh, near it. Um, but it's a question that's really lighting me up right now. So again, because I've kind of answered the previous question, I'm now asking a new one, okay? Um, and this is something that you always, you know, you, you wanna do too. Once you've kind of got to a point with a question, feel free to leave it behind and uh, change it. So <clears throat> I hope you found uh, this useful. Go and figure out what your massive impossible moonshot question uh, could be and maybe post some of them uh, in the comments. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more of these impromptu videos, uh, live stream things uh, on uh, the beach. And as I said, I've got a, a new class of Mission Make Music Your Life, my uh, program where I give you uh, missions to do. Uh, I mean, this massive impossible moonshot is a good example of the kind of thing that I uh, get you to do in Mission Make Music Your Life. Not that I've actually made a mission out of it, I probably should. Um, but, but, you know, it's the, kind, it's the kind of thing we do. There's studio missions, there's um, creative games that you play, there's mindset uh, missions, there's kind of very practical missions, there's more, you know, uh, life missions, and there's business missions too, uh, you know, uh, which really help you kind of get out there and uh, do, do the business. <laughs> because there is, I think, a new emergent music industry forming. Um, it's a super exciting time. I mean, it's a tragic time as well, but it's also in the midst of this tragedy, there is, you know, something that could be very special uh, happening. Uh, so, you know, I'd really like you to be at the forefront of uh, uh, that. So if you're interested in uh, Mission Make Music Your Life, click the link in the description um, and I will see you very soon. Onwards and upwards. I can't figure it, I can't see the... There we go, all right. As I said, onwards and upwards.